piano lesson number 20. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, advanced clapping. Well, not really advanced, but more advanced. <laughs> I'm going to be showing you guys some more advanced uh, rhythmic, what should we call them, gadgets? Stuff like that. But uh, I'm going to show you some rhythms and stuff that you can uh, identify and I'll clap them up so you can see how they're going to go. And then at the end, I'll write out a couple of exercises and you guys can clap those. Alright, so the first going. one we're going to start with is called the triplet. Okay, now this can be quite confusing to a lot of people and it's probably going to be uh, the toughest thing to get around. Now, why is the triplet so hard? Okay, well, um, remember when we were talking about compound time? Well, think of comp think of a trip a triplet is sort of like a window of a compound time in a single beat. If that makes any sense. Okay, so what it is actually, so you can always tell a triplet because they identify it with a, th a three. Sometimes it's above, sometimes it's below but you'll see a three right beside it. And they might not do it with the other ones if um, there's a whole bunch of triplets all over the place, but it has a sort of <laughs> Now notice I'm going strong, weak, weak, strong, weak, weak, strong, weak, weak, kind of a feel to it. Now, um, it can get confusing and a little bit difficult because um, say you're doing like dun, 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 and it's sort of, uh, I guess that's <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Um, when you're going along and then all of a sudden it just switches to a triplet, it can throw you off quite uh, horribly. So um, here we go. This is basically something that you should know, is that a triplet, say you have three um, eighth notes. They're all eighth notes. There's three of them. But then they just stick them in. Now something you'll notice is that there's a lot more triplets than there would there there it looks like there should be because a triplet's actual value is you take one of them away and that's what uh, the real value is. <laughs> so this is why it can be confusing because you have three claps or notes in the space of where two would normally go. So. Um, Basically, these three eighth notes equal two eighth notes. So you'd actually have to play th this, these two eighth notes and these three eighth notes at the same speed. Now, uh, there's a saying that you can use to uh, do these. Uh, to do um, triplets, you go either, depends on what, you, what kind of fruit you like here, do you like strawberries or blueberries? Now, whichever one you like, you can uh, say that along. You can go like this. To clap this out, you go strawberry, strawberry, or blueberry. And all you have to do is fit that phrase in where um, you'd be doing your regular beat. So say you're going like one and blueberry, one and blueberry, one and. So it's the same allotted space of time with more notes uh, pushed in together in a smaller space. It's like an overcrowded jail cell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So that's those. I'll write in an exercise to show you how to practice going between those two. Another way you can clap it is one and a. Uh. Okay, you can say it that way too. But I recommend the whole strawberry or blueberry because it's more intuitive. Okay. So that's that. Next thing is dotted notes. We covered those a little bit in the other lesson. But I wanted to further explain them just to make sure that you guys understand how these work. Okay, so I've written out two examples so you can see the difference. Or, in other words, the similarities. So, the first one here is a dotted quarter note. Now, what does a dotted note do? It adds 50% of whatever the value, like, uh, t say you have 100% value, which is one quarter note. And you add a dot to that, then you're adding another 50% to that. So now this quarter note is 150% of its value. So an, a more clear example here is we've got an eighth note here, an eighth note here. Pretend that's what, because uh, a quarter note without a dot would be two eighth notes, right? Two eighth notes make one quarter note. So when we add the dot, 
we're adding another eighth knot. Because what's half of this? Well, half of two is one, so we have one there, so we add another one. That's three. So that's, if each one of these was 50%, that's 50%, 100%, 150%. So that's how a dotted note works. It's the same principle here. So we have a half note. A half note would normally have two quarter notes in it. So one, two. Now we add the dot. So that has another quarter note added into it. So you can do that with anything. Any note value. It's all relative. It doesn't really make a difference which one you write. If you wrote an eighth note with a dot, then you're going to have three sixteenth notes on it. It doesn't really matter. That's just the general doesn't matter what note it is, it's just the idea of what the percentages of it, uh, it, all, it all relates to, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Hopefully I'm making sense here. <laughs> okay, so those are uh, the dotted notes. Okay, now uh, let's move on to the, the 16th notes and the 32nd notes. Okay, so I'm just going to... Alright, cut. So now the next thing we're going to do here is the quarter notes related to the 16th notes and the 32nd note. Now what I've done here is I've taken one single quarter note and we have plopped us like this. One and. So the and represents halfway through that beat, okay? So the first part of the beat when we're starting is the one. And by the time we say and, we're halfway through that beat and we're finishing like that. So one and like that. Okay, so now how the 16th note works is uh, if you took, if you say you broke this beat up into four e equal sections, so say you had an orange and you s cut it into four equal parts, this is what it would look like. So the one is happening on the first beat. Now if you notice, this would be your halfway marker in that thing, because this is the first, the second. Now this is the second half of it, right here, right? Because that would be right down the middle. You have two on that side, two on the other. So you're going to clap on the first one. You're not going to clap on, you're not going to count anything, but you'll clap in between. So you're going to go like this. One, and then when you get to the end, then you clap another two. And, like this, one, and. Now, here's the thing you need to resist the urge to do. Don't ever do this. One, and, one, and. That's horrible. Don't ever do that. Why? Because you can't play music um, squished together. You can't have part of it squished here and one there. When you do this, you're actually creating a completely different rhythm. It's nothing like this. This would be four equal claps going. Okay, that's four equal claps. All right. So now the next part here is the 32nd notes. So notice how I've drawn another line here, so that makes it. So there's one line, that's eighth notes, two lines, that's 16th notes, three lines, that's 32nd notes. Um, there's really no point in doing 64th notes because the chances of you actually running into a 64th note are almost next to nothing, so I'm not even going to worry about those, and you probably shouldn't either. And if you do, it's all just relative, it just means you have to add in, you know, double the amount of the 32nd notes. Okay, so how this works is now, since there's twice the amount of notes, there has to be another one of these, and so what I actually have to do, instead of clapping two for the one and two for the and, I have to clap four for the one and four for the and. So it's going to sound like this, one and, like that, one and, like that. Notice how they're all e equal. I didn't do the first one equal because I was kind of slowing down, but it goes one and, like that. So if we were doing this, it would go like this, one and, one and. One, and, like that, okay? So that's how you clap a 32nd note out. Okay, now, up here, these, whenever you see this line like this, it's, what the, it's actually trying to say is that these notes, 
this is a 30 sec er, sorry, a 16th note. It's sort of like having one of these, and then they've taken this away, like that. They're saying that this note isn't a 32nd note. Or a 16th note. What am I thinking? <laughs> okay, what they've done is it's like they've squished these two notes together, poop, like that, poop, like that. They're just together. And then this is still a 16th, and this is still a 16th. So we have like one hybrid, or uh, we sort of have like a hybrid mixture going on here. So how this is going to go, now I wrote out 1, 2, 3, 4 to represent the four uh, 16th notes. It doesn't have anything to do with beats or anything, I'm just doing it through E's. Because I could have wrote 1, E, and, uh, and that would have been a bit confusing, so I'm just going to write 1, 2, 3, 4. So 1 is just the first, whatever. So here. We have one right there. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. That's how this goes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. So like this. One, two, three, four. And that's how this works. Okay? So it's a quick one. That's how that sounds right here. So. Okay? Pretty simple. So uh, that doesn't really have a name for itself. It's just a, a hybrid of 16th and 8th notes put together, which sometimes you see. And then these here are dotted rhythms. So what I have here is a dotted quarter note with an 8th note, and then a dotted quarter note and an 8th note. So the quarter note takes up the 1 and the and, then the dot takes up the 2. Now this eighth note here mops up the rest and takes up the other half of the second beat. So it goes like this. One and two and. And then you keep going and go three and four and. Like that. So it's one and two and three and four and. So you kind of have this, if you sped that up, a dotted rhythm sounds like this. That last little bit wasn't really the dotted rhythm, but you get what I mean, right? Now this, that's another dotted rhythm, because we have an eighth note going to a, 16th, a dotted eighth note to a sixteenth note to a dotted eighth note to a sixteenth note. So it just goes like that. Now, something you might be cluing into is that it doesn't really matter what these are written out to. It doesn't matter if these are quarter notes and that's an eighth note. It doesn't matter. It's relative. This is a quarter note, that's an eighth note. So this is one chain down from this. Like a, like a whole note's up here, half note, then there's the quarter note, and then the eighth note. So if the quarter note and the eighth note are one below each other, like this, and then we take this, and it's an eighth note and a sixteenth note, so the eighth note's here and the sixteenth note's there, see they're still, they're just like that. It's one note below. Now if we had it separated like this, and we have a quarter note up here and a sixteenth note down there, then it's going to be a totally different rhythm way out there. But it doesn't matter if um, you've got um, something that's written in a different... How can I put it? I'm just sort of losing my words here. But, yeah. <laughs> if we have a, a quarter note and an eighth note here, and we have a quarter, or an eighth note and a sixteenth note, it's still relatively the same. It's one step down, right? If you're on some stairs and you're on the quarter note stair, and then you put your other foot on one step below that, you're on the eighth note stair. Now, if you put your other foot down on the sixteenth note stair, and your other foot, your right foot's on the eighth note stair, it's like they're still one stair apart, right? So there's not going to be any rhythmic difference unless the tempo is different. So that's something you need to get your mind around. It's not the t uh, it's not these that control how fast you do them, because you could do a 128th note like this slow. Or you could do whole notes like this fast. Do you know what the difference is? What makes how fast it goes? That's well, this is just a machine to help you 
understand how, uh, sort of have a set tempo. But what really makes um, the notes have their value and take their speed is what the tempo is. So that's the most important thing here. It's not, these are all relative things. What controls the speed is the tempo. So you pick the tempo and then you, re uh, you find your main beat and then all those other notes relate to whatever your main beat has been established as. So that's something that you really need to get in your head. Okay, because a lot of people, they think a quarter note always has to be this long. It doesn't. It could be this long. Or this long. Or this. So that's something you need to get your head around. Okay? If you, well, if you already have your head around that, then congratulations. Okay? And if you don't, try to work on that. And maybe this video will open your eyes to uh, that topic there. So I'm leaving you guys to go on and uh, research that. But, well, you don't really need to research it because I already told you the information. Just think about it. Let that concept stew in your mind. Okay, now I'm going to write you guys out some exercises to go through. All right, okay. so now I've drawn out some exercises. Now I don't think I'm going to clap through all of these because this could take quite a while if I was explaining it all. So, but uh, I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to put it at the end of the video and uh, you're welcome to, you know, pause it and try to write down the questions and uh, try clapping them out. But, okay, so this first one, by going with the patterns we've learned, I'll just go through this quickly. So these, by the way, are ties, so you're going to be holding the notes. So you'll clap here and hold. Okay, so here it goes, one and two and, uh, two and, like that. You go two, e, and, ah. Uh. That's actually how I do it. I got confused whether I wanted to tell you that or not, and it totally screwed me up. But, uh, so I've written the and here, but in my mind I'm thinking in a group of four. So I'm going two, e, and, ah, uh, like that with this part. And then here, it's I'm thinking in a group of four as well. There's two here and there's two over there. So it, all together it goes like one and two three and uh, three and uh, like that. That's how this one goes. Now this one goes like this. One and two and three and just like that. It's that easy. The important part here is to try to keep it steady. Here it's going to go one and strawberry three and like that. So one and strawberry three and just like that in there. Um, so try to keep these steady. You're trying to fit in the same amount of space. So one and one and like that. The next line down here goes like this. One and two and three and four and. Now the hard part here is when you say four, you actually have to be kind of holding it. So it goes three, e, and, uh, four, and then you clap here, and, like that. So three, e, and, uh, three, e, and, uh, four, and, like that, right there. Here, um, now we go one, and, uh, two, and, three, and, four, that's how you do that. Now here, let's go to the next line. line. It goes like this. So we've got a tie here, and it's going to go like this. One and two and three and four and. So this this part's tricky because you can't clap on the three because you'll want to do this two and three and. Uh, that's what you want to do, but you are not allowed to actually clap there. So you have to go. Two and three and uh, like that. So you're going to be playing, like kind of feeling the triplet without clapping it. That's the hard part there. <laughs> so you can do like a little handshake or head nod or something like that, and that'll help you clap it better. So that's how that goes. Now this part here goes like this. One and two and three and four and like that. So that's with the 30 seconds there. So one and two and three and four and just like that. So that is quickly how you would clap all of those things. So now I'm going to put the picture there and you guys can go through those claps and uh, use my video to see if you're getting it right. 
So make sure to count out loud and keep steady while you're counting, okay? So practice hard. These aren't going to come too easily for you. And if they do, that's cool. Okay, well, take care. Watching. Uh, piano lesson number 20 on uh, some more, uh, more advanced, not super advanced, but pretty advanced uh, rhythms. So take care. I hope you guys enjoy that. Have a good one.